in the media industry. She came with her own seat and put it right in the middle center of it. And she's making a huge difference. And I will be, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to introduce our very own executive director, Monica Ndungu. She is here. A round of applause for her. Trust me, this woman is an icon. Do not be fooled that she's tall. She's actually very sweet. Zainab, good words. She knows where, who butters her bread. But <laughs> even more, she knows that when we speak female at Nation Media Group, we're not giving it lip service. It is something we mean. It is something we do. And it is something we are extremely proud of. And it gives me great pleasure as a representative of my group CEO, Mr. Stephen Gitagama, who we chose not to invite and we forced to pay for this event. <laughs> but he gave us his blessings because he supports women. And for him, women, like I said, is not about lip service. And today, just like Zainab said, we're joined by icons. You know, when you call Monica an icon, you start uh, wondering what that word means. But the people with us here today are really people whose shoulders we stand on because of things they have done and said for the cause of women in this country. And today, we are joined by our keynote speaker, Professor Julia Ojambo. Let's give her a round of applause, a good round of applause. Thank you. We are also joined by Flora Mutahi, who's the chairperson of KEPSA. A big round of applause. We are also joined by Jennifer Karina. A big round of applause for Jennifer. We are also joined by Rebecca Tiba. A big round of applause for Rebecca. And we are also joined by Kathy Kuna. A big round of applause. We are also joined by lovely women dressed in purple. A color so beautiful today. I really struggled to get purple. So anybody wearing full purple, I give you props. I, I said a touch of purple, but I give you props. And as we were thinking about this event today, I want to read you something from Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. For every door that's been opened to me, I've tried to open my door to others. And here is what I have to say finally. Let's invite one another in. Maybe then can we begin to fear less, to make fewer wrong assumptions, to let go of the biases and the stereotypes that unnecessarily divide us. Maybe we can be better. Maybe we can better embrace the ways we are the same. It's not about being perfect. It's not about where you get yourself in the end. There's power in allowing yourself to be known and hard, in owning your unique story, in you Willing to know and hear others. This, for me, is how we become. And as I read the book Becoming and saw this quote, I thought about us in this room today and how every single time we are accused of being our own enemies, which I dispute very, very loudly. However, it also came to me that the reason Monica can't have a voice is because someone else worked hard to ensure she had that voice. And therefore the challenge Monica must have every time she stands up, she takes a role somewhere, is that she must give somebody else a voice. And that's what today is all about. About the present being female. Ab about us uplifting each other. About today, I beg you to listen. I beg you to understand. And I beg you to reach out to someone today and say, you know what? We will become because I'm here. And so your strength, your weakness will be something I can use. So it gives me great pleasure to allow you to enjoy yourself. You know, I'm a communicator. So I choose to stop there and allow us to enjoy the evening and ask Zainab to take us through the program. Thank you very much. In fact, I will be giving you the honor to... Uh, 
apologies. All right. Uh, I want to give you the honor and pleasure to invite our keynote speaker. Thank you, Zainab. You see, as you grow up as a young girl, I'm all of 42. These days we don't care whether they know our ages or not. We tell our ages loud and proud. I'm all of 42. But growing up in Kenya, you heard about some people. You heard about their exploits. You heard about the battles they had to go through to give people like us opportunities to be, think that we could become, like I said. And it would be nice for me to go through a whole CV of Professor Julia Ojiambo. But I wouldn't do it justice. Because when you hear her, you will understand why, for our inaugural high tea event, we invited Professor Julia Ojiambo. So I'll ask you to kindly stand up, be upstanding, as we welcome Professor Julia Ojiambo to kindly come and give us the keynote speech. Karibu sana. Let's give her a round of applause as she comes to the stage. This. You can have your seats. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for that welcome. Distinguished political, business, religious, community, and family leaders present here, friends, colleagues, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am deeply honored to stand before this formidable gathering of women here in this room and also before the women, men, boys and girls who are watching us online. Only a few decades back, a gathering such as this would have been a mere dream. Most of us who are here cannot believe that. It never happened in my lifetime. When I was your age, maybe, it was difficult to find your kind of ladies during that time to sit. We thank God for today. This afternoon, I join you in paying tribute to women trailblazers, past and present, to those whose shoulders we stand on today. From Wangu wa Makeri to Mekatili wa Mensa, from Grace Onyango to Felomena Chelegat, Motai to Wangari Mathai to women beyond our borders, from Rosa Parks, to Winnie Mandela, and Indra Gandhi, Madeleine Albright, to Kamala Harris. We celebrate women today. To our 21st century's heroines, we celebrate women like Her Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan, the President of Tanzania, Malala, the education advocate who challenges the Taliban, Ofra Winfrey, the formidable businesswoman. We celebrate the great milestones achieved by women in various spheres of public life. Leadership takes many shapes or forms. We have community leadership, religious leadership, academic leadership, business leadership, and political leadership. In all these spheres, women continue to 
trailblaze and grow in numbers. Today, we will celebrate all our sisters, from the young girls who form a sisterhood to support each other through schools, to the young ladies beginning to shape their careers to women-led families and women-owned businesses. We celebrate women leaders in the corporate world, civil society, and religion. I look forward to hearing the voices of the panelists here today who reflect this spectrum. Yes, we celebrate. And yet, I acknowledge that there is still more to do to ensure that women leaders are respected and embraced and not seen as exceptions or outsiders to leadership. There's also more to be done to transform systems to be more supportive of women leaders. However, today, I want to start by congratulating all our brave women leaders who offered themselves as candidates in the just concluded general elections. And in particular, I want to congratulate the 87 women who were elected to represent us in the biocameral parliament as members of parliament, governors, and senators. This does not include those nominated. That number does not include those nominated by their political parties. And while I do not have the total number of women in the county assemblies, we do know that the numbers have increased significantly. For the first time since the advent of devolution, we have a woman as the chair of the Council of Governors. Yay. Congratulations. In addition, the list of cabinet nominees recently unveiled by His Excellency President Dr. William Samuel Ruto includes a record 10 women, seven of whom are positioned for full cabinet positions and three tipped for cabinet advisory roles. These are developments that we urge the President to continue to build on to support the progress of the movement towards making Kenya's political leadership more, gen more gender inclusive. Today, as women across the nation, we celebrate the Chief Justice Martha Kome, who is at the helm of the judiciary, and the Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu. We celebrate all of the women in the judicial service who are championing the cause of justice in our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gratified to note that the theme of today's gathering is the present is female. This theme aptly captures the upswell of passion and the determination of the young women in this country. The young women want to take the rightful roles in the society. It's a recognition that the moment to acknowledge women leaders is not some undefined distant future, but it is indeed now. In many ways, the present is indeed female. Together, we have made tremendous achievements towards achieving gender equality in Kenya. We have seen changes in the law that have established women's rights in succession, consolidated women's rights to protection against violence, and instituted affirmative action that has given women access to procurement opportunities. We witnessed in the very early days ladies like Priscilla Abuao, 
the first Kenyan community development officer who was the only, the sole, female African nominated to attend the Lancaster House Conference. We also witnessed Dr. Florence Ngeno Mwangi, the first Kenyan female doctor. We were witnessed Pamela Jelimo as the first Kenyan female to win an, an Olympic gold medal. Irene Kokimutungi became the first female on the African continent to become certified as a captain of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner aircraft. And Fatou Mohamed, who is the first Kenyan female soldier to be appointed as a Major General of the Kenya Defense Forces. <laughs> Faith Mwangagi, as the first woman to command a warship in Kenya. And Lupita Nyong'o, who won the Oscar Academy Award. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree that we have witnessed many firsts for women right across the spectrum. We are deeply indebted to those I have named and to all of those extraordinary women who are the first in their field. And there are many. I can't list them all this afternoon. We respect, honor, and cherish them for the struggles they endured and sacrifices that they have made by their resilience and commitment, these women have opened the doors for us to step in. And now, let us all understand that to sustain these gains, we must make an effort to build on them now in the present. Allow me to acknowledge those working in dynamic fields of technology. We have Kendin Riga. We have Ken Ndriga of Facebook and Agnes Gathaya of Google. In the area of business, we have many CEOs like Rita Kavashe of Isuzu, Jenny Karuku of East African Brewers Limited, and Nassim Devji of Diamond Trust Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, to say that the present is female is by no means to say that we have achieved the ideal. Even with our truly remarkable achievements, women are still underrepresented at policy and decision-making levels. Patriarchal gender attitudes and practices have stood in the way of a complete breakthrough and together, we must continue to call for urgent action to address the direct and the indirect discrimination against women that still persists. When I first joined the parliament, and that was in the early 1970s, the house was practically an exclusive club of men. We were no more than four women at the time. And the common questions at that time included, who brought this young girl here? What makes you, and then look at you, look at your face. What makes you believe that you can talk before men? Yeah? That was the order of the day. The women were, as I said, not as many as we are today, and we, it was not known that we had voice. So while such questions are no longer common inside the parliament, you won't find that in our present day parliament, the mindset that brought them about remains pre prevalent in many spheres of women's life. 12 years now, 
after the 2010 constitution was promulgated. Ten successful attempts, unsuccessful attempts, ten unsuccessful attempts to pass the affirmative action bill, the two-thirds gender rule is yet to become law. We have had His Excellency Dr. William Ruto promised us to put in place mechanism to implement this provision within his first year of his administration. We want to say that this would be indeed a critical step towards our realization of our quest to level the playing field. So there is great hope. And we want to say that the future is now. There may not be a critical mass of women in policy and decision-making positions, but there is a critical mass of women who believe in the present. And I'm sure those of us who are here do that. We believe in the present, that's why we are here. And have hope for the future and are bold enough to step forward and push beyond glass ceiling. So ladies and gentlemen, this is your time. This is your time. Trust you are powerful beyond measure and that the time for action is now. The doors have been opened. You have space to talk, to express your opinions, and to be the change that you want to see. Together, we must redouble our efforts to ensure that girls do go to school. And if they go to school, they stay there. Girls who miss out on school automatically lose opportunities for a better future. We still have many missing. So we still have many uh, missing go school and therefore many missing the future. Studies have shown that children whose mothers completed just primary education generally have a better health care. And in addition to that, they also have better development indicators. So in Kenya, as is the case around the world, women and girls have been disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. This happened because the pandemic exhibited inequalities that were already existing. There has been a terrifying increase in domestic violence. The women have suffered tremendous setbacks in economic gains that they had so hard worked for to achieve. And in addition, now the climate change is a real and present danger and worsening many of the problems that the Kenyan women had grappled to with for decades. The climate crisis puts women at risk of worsening access to water and productive land, making women have to walk further to fetch water and putting them at risk of lower food yields. We must empower our women ourselves, empower our farmers across the country to ensure that they have what they need to increase their productivity. So these are just some of the reasons why we must have more women sitting at the decision-making table with men. I think it is very important to state that while we put emphasis on strengthening opportunities for young girls and women, we need more men allies. There is no way that a game will be won with half team, and there's no way that one hand can clap. We need more male allies to support, mentor, 
and create meaningful spaces for women around the various tables. Women too must support each other, create space for others. Just like uh, we listen to what uh, Michelle Obama said, we must encourage ourselves to bring others to join us and lift each other. This will bring a perspective that will, com that will complete the picture. So together, let us commit Kenya to a better place. The girl who wants to be a president in, 19, uh, sorry, in 2037, uh, and we are hoping that probably we'll get them earlier than that, but let's just put it at that. That girl must not face the same hurdles I faced when I ran for Funyola parliamentary seat in 1974. Must be different. And we must make it different. This is our journey towards our bold and audacious dream for equality for women in Kenya so that each and every female will confidently stand in their truth knowing that the present is female. And once again, I just want to thank you for inviting me to this great event. Aduta Continua. God bless us all. God bless our great nation, Kenya. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Julia Ojiambo. I will ask all of you to just stand up and give a warm, warm thank you to Professor here. Thank you so much, Professor. An icon in her own right as she walks down. Yes, quite slowly. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Prof. I will, I will take that mic and, of course, ask you to come to that side and sit right where you were seated. Thank you so much. And I'll pick on just one sentence that the Prof mentioned. We must support each other and encourage ourselves and lift each other. And essentially, that is the essence of why we're gathered here today, to uplift each other, to encourage each other, and to just empower each other. And I'm really grateful for that particular talk. And I know my media mogul colleague, Smriti Vidyarthi, will be coming up. And of course, uh, our panelists will be setting up uh, right at this podium to have even a more deeper conversation on why this is so important. And at the same time, I will ask you not to just keep quiet, talk to each other, uplift each other, and of course, empower each other. And remember, we're still having tea. It's a high tea. So make sure when you go home today, you just sleep. There's no cooking dinner, right? Oh, you have to cook dinner for the babies. All right. And as you do that, I will move on the other side and I will be engaging other partners who made this a success and why their businesses is so important for the issue of women in this country and why we must continue to have this discussion at the same time remember take pictures post them on social media the hashtag the present is female correct all right enjoy yourselves talk and have fun that is the most important thing this afternoon thank you All right. All right. Thank you. So I, I will be engaging one of our partners. And of course, uh, this is uh, from Mary Daddy Motors. That is Eric uh, Ngigi. Thank you so much. You know, there's, there's, there's a reason why we have women in businesses yes. and one of the biggest issues for you and I think I've, I've, I've just taken a look at is a project that uh, you are uh, doing it's about Inua boy child yes. uh, Namari daddy yes. maybe just give us an idea of exactly what that means uh, this basically means that uh, it is a good time for us to start having conversations of empowering the boy child mm -hmm. uh, for the girl child because in as much as we've done a very good job as a society to empower the girl child mm -hmm. We are seeing a lot of problems in society. If, for example, you look at stories that have been highlighted in the media, 
we have seen girls uh, actually being maimed, being injured and being killed by the boys. Mm -hmm. And we are saying maybe it's time for us to respond by enlightening our boys a bit more mm -hmm. and preparing them on how to deal with this girl who is a bit more empowered in society. All right. Yeah. So that's very important. Thank you. And at the same time empowering the girl child. Completely. Completely. We are not leaving any behind. No, we are saying that for us to build a healthy society, mm -hmm. we need strong boys mm -hmm. and we need strong girls. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Mary Daddy Motors. You're welcome. And uh, we do appreciate for you being part of this wonderful event. It's our pleasure. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. And now, of course, as you just move uh, uh, on the other side, uh, allow me to also now introduce Mr. Joseph Kamata, who's the Newlands Limited Company, his executive director. My quick question to you is, do women buy land? Oh, that's a good question. The reason why we're here is because 70% of our clients mm -hmm. are women. Actually, women are the ones who buy land. Mm -hmm. We do take a lot of people to see our sites and our land, mm -hmm. but mostly it's the women who make the decisions. Mm -hmm. And yes, they do land, buy land. And we're here to thank them mm -hmm. and to say that we're ready to partner with them and support them in their land buying and development oh, journey. But we're seeing more women buy land. Oh, yes. So yeah. that, that's a great thing. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Yes, we want Thank to you. encourage them. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you so much, Mr. Joseph Kamata. All right. And uh, just also uh, coming right into the stage is Dr. Elizabeth Owala, who's the committee member at CAPSA. Thank you so much. And I know Thank CAPSA, you, you know, is, is, is helping women in, in the business world. Mm -hmm. Just give us an idea of, you know, the kind of work that CAPSA is doing to ensure that the environment is conducive for women who are entering business. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so I'll speak as a woman entrepreneur who joined CAPSA. Mm -hmm. We have I've had so much support in terms of training programs, in terms of linkage to financial support, in terms of peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, and also in terms of mentorship for older people. Mm -hmm. So my, my request to women who want to get into business is that you just start. There's a saying that we have in my language called tsiaka tsiaka, which mm -hmm. just means just start. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. And, and, and uh, from what we're seeing and you know from your own data, mm. how are women thriving in the business world? I think we've seen quite a rise in terms of women uh, being more confident mm -hmm. after giving, being uh, built in terms of their capacity, their confidence, access to capital and markets. So we're seeing quite a number of women business owners coming up. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you so much. And of course, uh, another phenomenal woman, Rosalind Ndikwe, who's a, the SACO vice chair of Mhasibu SACO. Yes. Thank you. A very good afternoon. Looking quite lovely. Thank Tell you. Tell us how Mhasibu is really, you know, in, at the forefront in leading by having women in leadership. Uh, awesome. Uh, Mohasibu is a, a professional circle, all professionals, and uh, with a membership of 20,000 members mm -hmm. and a uh, set base of 8 billion. And uh, what I can say about with Mohasibu empowering mm -hmm. women is that in leadership we have, uh, it's the only uh, one of the organizations that have achieved gender parity with our chairperson, CPA Jennifer, mm -hmm. myself as a vice chair, we have 50-50, we have achieved wow. gender parity. And not only in a board, eh, but also in the secretariat team. That is the management. Right. Yeah, so that also means that we have also gender mainstreamed mm -hmm. our policies mm -hmm. and uh, even our products uh, for circles and for the members. Uh, they are very, uh, you know, for women, they, it's to empower them economically. Correct. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank and you. we appreciate the kind of work that you do. Thank you. All right. And next I will allow Winnie Maina, who is the director of Icon Prime Property, Properties, to Thank join you. us. Winnie, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Just, fantastic. Just give us an idea of, you know, what Icon Prime Properties do for women and especially what kind of products do you have for women in specifically? We are encouraged that mm -hmm. so many women are reaching out, asking about property, right. and especially the property we are currently selling along Kangudo Road in Tala Town. Most women are encouraged to cement their stability when it comes to land ownership. Um, we feel like women are at that place where they also have articulated it within themselves that the present is really women. So most of our greatest investors, investors at the moment are really women and uh, they are also gifting their children. We, uh, we appreciate the fact that right. women feel like as they stabilize, they also want their children to stabilize. Fantastic. And that is a beautiful thing to do. Thank you so much. We do appreciate that, Winnie. And uh, allow me to now just 
call to the stage as well at this point, uh, Ruth Wangombe, who is the brand manager, personal care at PZ Cousins. Maybe just tell us as well from PZ Cousins, what is the biggest agenda for women from your company? So we are excited to be part of this initiative by NTV, uh, basically because as an organization we value diversity in terms of our workforce and equally in terms of the products that we put out in the market. As Imperial Leather, we have a full range of soaps, uh, body wash and body lotions. And this is just to ensure as the women go out to conquer the world, your personal care good. needs are taken care of. So you feel good and go out there. In terms of other brands that we have, we have Morning Fresh again to just help women as they work in the kitchen to make their work easier. So it's quite exciting and uh, really good to see that women have really risen uh, from previous years. All right. Thank you so much. And I, I think I'm seeing a stand right outside the tent. Yes. Quite a beautiful display there of, you know, personal care products. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And we look forward to getting a few of those. Thank you so much. All right. And uh, at this point, uh, Gidua Ngaruya, who is the Madison Insurance uh, Managing Director. All right, fantastic. You're representing Gidua. Yeah, yeah. All right, maybe just tell us your name and, and, and give us an idea of how Madison Insurance is coming together to ensure that the women conversation is at the forefront. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Karanja. I'm the top agent, Madison Insurance. And as, as Madison, we are in for the women leadership and encouraging women. And we have some products which we empower women. And you can invest and become a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So as, we, as a woman, Madison has tailor made a, a product that is for women. And once you invest in that women, you become powerful. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank we you so much. so much. And at this point, uh, I would like to now invite a Forum Sieve. Uh, that is uh, Forum Sieve. That's uh, the regional manager, I believe, Rosaline Orwa who is now joining us uh, right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is a great opportunity, a great conversation. Tell us about Forum Civ and why they found this so important to be part of this initiative. Thank you so much. I stand here as a widow, a widow advocate, mm -hmm. and the CEO of Rona Foundation mm -hmm. that Forum Civ funds. Mm -hmm. Forum Civ funds grassroots women organizations, Rona being one of them. Others are Wajia Radio. Isiolo Gender Watch, crew, and others that work with minority women. Why for um, we get here? Because we are talking the present is female. The present is female, but for widows that are mostly ignored by formal and informal systemic government leadership and all spaces, for um, SIV gives us the space to represent the voices of those minority women, mm -hmm. mostly widows. Because the present, when we are talking about it being female, we must also ask, which female? Mm -hmm. Who is at the table of decision making? Who is at the table of governance? Right. We are looking at a new government now, appointive positions. Mm -hmm. Will there be widows there? Will there be women from Trukana, from Wajia, from Isiolo? Mm -hmm. Sometimes education limits minority right. women. Mm -hmm. And that is where for Amsiv's supporters to be inclusive and make our present female. Indeed. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so much, Rosaline Oro from uh, Forum Sieve. Indeed, that is what uh, our partners have to say about this great initiative. And without much ado and without adding any more, allow me to now hand this over to my wonderful friend and colleague, Smriti Vidyarthi, who is sitting with a panel of phenomenal powerful, wonderful women just to give us some bits of wisdom on why this conversation is important and the present is female really. Smriti, over to you. Zainab, thank you very much indeed. A very good evening to you. I am Smriti Vidyarthi and the present is female. That is the theme this afternoon. Thanks so much for staying with us on this Nation Media Group High Tea event. With me on the stage are four incredible and dynamic women. Ladies, thank you for joining us. Allow me to introduce them. With me is Flora Mutahi, the chair of KEPSA, that is the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. I also have Jennifer Karina, the founder and CEO of Anchor, and also Reverend Kathy Kuna. And beside Reverend Kathy, I have 
Rebecca Tiba Karanja, the Managing Director of Madison Investment Managers, uh, Managers Limited. All right, just allow me to give you a brief introduction to these women. Some of you may have heard of them, but some of you may not have heard of them. So here's a little bit more information just to get a sense of who they really are. So Flora is an entrepreneur with 25 years in the managing sector. She has extensive local and also international experience in strategic leadership, business development, market penetration, and marketing as well. Flora is the founder and CEO of Melvin Marsh International Limited, and that is Kenya's first flavored tea company. And in 2017, she became the first female chair of uh, the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. <laughs> A round of applause from our audience. Thank you so much. Jennifer Karina, she is the founder and CEO of Anchor, and the company's goal is to support corporates and communities in Africa to live purposely, to love passionately, and thrive fully. In addition, Jennifer is a board of and governance expert, energy leadership master practitioner and coach. She has a career in corporate leadership that spans 40 years and in her capacity as a psychologist, she has enabled many individuals and teams to develop their mental and emotional resilience and wellness. Beside her is Reverend Kathy Kuna. A round of applause as well. Now, Reverend Kathy Kuna is the visionary of the Daughters of Zion Ministry, which is an offshoot of the Jubilee Christian Church that ministers to the women. The vision of the Daughters of Zion Ministry is raising the standard among women. She is also a mentor, an author, and has preached on international platforms. Yeah. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, Rebecca Tibak Karanja. Now, in addition to being the MD of Madison Investment Managers Limited, Rebecca also serves as the first female director of the Fund Managers Association and the Fund Management Industry Lobby Group, and is currently the chair of its stakeholders committee. And Rebecca has over 18 years experience in the financial services industry. So with me this evening is a group of very well established and successful women. I am so excited to engage you all, and I'm looking forward to, as much as our viewers and our guests here, to a real and raw conversation. So on that note, let me start with today's theme. We've been talking about the present being female. The theme this evening is the present is female. But my question to each of you is, is it really? Is the present really female? Or is that what we want to believe it is? And that's OK, because it's good to believe. Is it possible? for the present to be only female? Does there need to be a balance? I'll start with you, Rebecca. In essence, <laughs> in your view, is the present really female? I would say, sorry, I would say yes and no. Yes, because uh, we've done a lot as women uh, to reach here. No, because there's still so much to be done, yeah? Jennifer, a very straightforward answer that makes sense, yes and no. What are your thoughts? Well, when um, I read the, uh, that the present is female, I said, how cool is that? Okay. Now, then I remembered even the past is female. I was reminded of a grandmother that raised me, and she was a powerful woman. I was reminded of my mother and as a result of why I am here and as a powerful woman, I climbed on the shoulders of many powerful women in the past and I had a problem with thinking the present is female because there is a past that I belong to. Look at Professor Julia Ujiambuj. Doesn't she look good? <laughs> Give her a better hand and clap. Now, she falls in the category of being my mom. My mother was a teacher. I am who I am as a result of my upbringing. 
if you met my grandmother, my grandfather actually married another woman and, and left her in those days. She grew up alone. My grandmother was a single woman. She raised six sons, and one of those sons was my father. And my father, before you clap, my father was the first African bank manager with Barclays Bank. I mean, kudos to my grandmother. Uh -huh. And so I embrace that we have come a long way. My grandmother did roads and got school fees and found people who funded educating her sons. But today, even as you heard the speech that uh, Professor uh, Julia Ojiambo just gave us, we have come a long way in the strides of being women. Now, the future is women. The present is women. I don't want to shout, because my husband might just hear me on TV, but let me tell you, a woman is an influencer. Without me, I doubt there would be a home. <laughs> Clap for yourselves. A woman is an influencer. So when we say that the present is female, I want to have no apology and say, yes, the present is female. But the question is, how do you conduct yourself with the vibe that the present is female when we have the males around us, all right? I don't apologize about being a female, but I trend very carefully in the way that I perceive myself in the presence of the men, all right? I allow the men in my life to take all the credit when I do all the work. Why? Why do Because you do I know for sure, while I have a voice, I have to use my voice with a lot of wisdom. And I can look at these girls and tell you, Smitty, for free. They are earning better monies and higher salaries than their husbands. But they bling it. If it's not for me, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> I give you money, you go spend it with other girls. <laughs> I will tell you this. You've got to apply wisdom in knowing even while their present is female, how do I exercise my powers? There ain't anybody as powerful as a woman yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But the reason that it won't work for you is simply because you don't know how to carry yourself. And we'll be talking about that later. So the present is female. Kudos. It is a fact because that's where we are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Reverend Kathy, do you agree with those very strong <laughs> sentiments? And also, do you get a sense that perhaps some women, based on what Jennifer has said, have to tread cautiously? Mm -hmm. uh, women are very powerful. I like what Jennifer just said. Let me just go to the creator that created that woman. The minute he left the woman with the man and went away for just a minute, by the time he came back, the woman had taken over. She had told the man, we are eating the fruit. The man did not even, she just ate the fruit. You know, he just ate with her. So women are very influential and very powerful. And I totally agree with what Jennifer is saying, that wisdom is important to be exercised because yes it's time for women and the beauty about women taking uh, charge and taking their position is that a woman will never go up alone look at again Julia uh, Ojiambo such a beautiful woman look who's beside her her daughter look who's next to her her grandchild look who came with me my daughter and that is a woman for you she never rises by herself. She always ensures that everybody is catered for. And so the beauty of that is when a woman recognizes that she doesn't have to be a man. She doesn't have to have muscle. She only has to be feminine enough to accept her role as a woman. And as a result, we're going to run the race together with the man. Because baby, we need the man. <laughs> oh, we need the man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, Flora, I bring you into this conversation now. In your view, is the present female? Um, actually, we were just making a joke about it with Rebecca earlier. A decade ago, 
we used to say the future is female. Today, we are saying the present is, is female. So like they've said before, a lot of steps have been covered. So for me, yes, I say the future, the, the current is female. And it's not, we haven't reached anywhere where we want to go. In the corporate world, the woman is still way behind. I mean, we look at um, in, on the boards. I think Kenya right now, we are doing 36% female to male, which is way above the global average, which is 23%. And we've come from about 13. So definitely, there's been growth. C-suite, there's still a lot of growth. And um, the lower cadre, you tend to find there's a lot more women, because that's where women sort of have typically been thrown to, you know, go, go do the work, go do, go do what is there. So in the corporate world, again, in entrepreneurship, look at it, look, look, look at, look at that. Um, they say 85% of um, small businesses in a country are entrepreneurs, perhaps over 60% of those are women. So um, women are sort of getting, they're, they're sort of there, but do women grow their businesses? No. Do women have large scale businesses? No. Because of all these other gender biases. So for us to say the current is female is to say, let us sit down and do what we're doing today. Let's have Julia speak to us. Let's have a conversation so that women can take their rightful place to get us to a balance. R remember, um, I think um, when we're born, it's like 50, 50, 50 male, 50 female. I hear there's a zero point something here and there. But that is what you want in the world. Well, that's what, what the population speaks in. That's what we want in all the spheres, in the political sphere, in the business sphere. In, in all the spheres of, of the world. So the current, what we are saying now, to say the current is, is um, female, is to say, women, it is time for us to step up. It is time for us to remove the gender biases. It is time for us to pull a seat at the table. And if there's no seat, damn well bring one. All right, thank you. Now you're saying it is time, but surely it was time to have that seat at the table a long time ago. So my question now is, why are we still struggling? What are the main challenges? Why do we feel that we need to have a high tea conversation and bring women together and empower them? Of course, it's in our best interest, but why, do we, why are we still at that point in 2021 when we are fighting for equality, we are fighting for our rights, and we are still pushing so hard? Um, Professor Ojiambo spoke about all the successes we have made, but she also alluded to the fact that we still have a lot of work to do. So that leads me to my next question. What really, Jennifer, from where you sit and based on your experience, are some of the key barriers in the way of women? Thank you, Smithy, for that question. One of the key barriers for women is our society that is very high, hierarchical. And um, I mean, basically, the man is the head and uh, the woman follows. And that has been from time immemorial. So um, a woman has no voice. I grew up as a young woman in the environment where I knew very clearly that a woman was to bring salt and not sit at the table with the guests. I've experienced that. But I, I, I was privileged <clears throat> to be brought up by, I, I would say, a modern father. So I was allowed to sit at the table with guests. And so it's about so socialization. And socialization has a major play in who we are as women. It could also be cultural, religious, and everything. But even when we are given freedom as women, allow me to say, you may be in an environment where you are allowed to become who you need to become. I'm reminded of a chicken. When we come from the village, mother gives us chicken, the chicken is tied, and when we get home, and untie the chicken, the chicken doesn't go anywhere. You hit it, it jumps a few steps, and it stays there. Many women are that way. You've been given opportunity, you've been given freedom, but you are unable to take the leap of faith because you feel inadequate, because you're struggling with your self-esteem, because you don't feel beautiful enough, I'm not intelligent enough, I'm not capable enough, I am not enough. If you take anything home today, tell your neighbor right now, I am enough. 
I mean, I am so enough, I'm so enough that I don't need anyone to complete me. And so that is the biggest challenge. Are you willing? I can tell you I had been offered a position uh, to, to take on the, a position of being a chair of, of a private and uh, a public organization. And I was not able to do that for three years. For how many years? Three. Because I was afraid. The man, I, they are going to hit my head. They are going to scandalize me. You know, being on the table with men is not easy. They can beat you senseless in terms of using undue power. I'll tell you this. You cannot rise as women without taking risks in sitting in places where it's okay. They will talk about me in the day. They will sleep in the night. Wataongea mchana usiku watalala. So what are you afraid about being talked about? I mean, you can ask us. We can tell you lots of stories, but not for today. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, you are your greatest barrier in rising the bar. You have not allowed it. I hear many times, uh, even women, I do mentoring, coaching, and many times women will say, my husband will not allow me. You have the fear of the person who's your best buddy in the house. And you have assumptions, interpretations, and limiting beliefs. Now, remember the chicken? That is just who you are. You just need to liberate your mind. It's all in the mind. And when you have it in the mind, you go. When you do get married, allow me to say, actually, the husband can see that you've got too much power and want to control. All right? It's natural. Some of them cannot take it. Many of them tell me, I cannot stand it that my wife earns more than I do. Now, the secret is, allow yourself to be humble enough even when your dollars are rolling in. Allow yourself to share what you have with whoever you live with for you to be successful. I'm a powerhouse, I can tell you. If you've read my book, you will see I made the money and I gave it to my man. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's how I earned my freedom. Right. Am and I that, talking to somebody? that is what I want to come to next. You mm -hmm. talk about fear, you talk about finances, and you talk about freedom. Rebecca, I want to bring you in here. Do you think that women would not be as scared and would have more confidence if they had the financial security and the financial freedom? What, what part does financial security play in a woman's uh, lifelong security? I think financial security plays more than 80%. And I would say this again, Jenny has talked about her upbringing. You know, most of the women have grown in very destitute situations. So as we sit here and, and, and uh, say that maybe they didn't have, uh, they've been given the opportunities and they've not taken them, yes, they reach a place like myself where you're in leadership, but maybe because of your upbringing, you're still battling what I would call demons. The the inadequacies, yeah? But once you get financially secure, once, once you're on that path, you feel more confident. You're able to take care of your family. Most of us here are taking care of even our extended families. So that gives you a bit more confidence, more, um, more uh, zeal to work hard, more zeal to get those positions of power but I, I, I think also that the conversation needs to get to how can women empower themselves? And as Jenny has said, there have been many books that have been written. I'm sure even Professor Ojiambo has read a lot of books. Definitely most of us here, to reach to the levels, the high levels, you need to learn, you need to train yourself, you need to 
uh, go where people haven't gone or where people have gone before. So with financial freedom comes a lot of uh, opportunities and a lot of confidence. So I agree with that. All right, thank you. Reverend Kathy, I'll bring you in now. And the aim of this get together is to celebrate women, to discuss real issues, to empower and to interact as well. Ultimately, what women want, what anyone probably wants, is to be successful. Whether it is successful climbing that career ladder, success can also be defined as being a homemaker, a stay-at-home mom, yeah. and being a family woman. There are very many ways women can be successful, but how do you actually measure success? Mm -hmm. That's such a good question. And let me just start by saying, I have a, a program on NTV called Woman Without Limits. And you can watch it tomorrow at 4 p.m. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. 4 p.m. on NTV. 4 p.m. tomorrow, y'all. Now, why do I say Woman Without Limits? Because the only limit you can have in this life is the one you have put upon yourself. There is no devil in hell that can stop a woman who has removed every limit. There is no insecurity enough. There is nothing. Only you can stop yourself. And how do you stop yourself? By some of the things we are engaging in, where you're insecure, you feel inferior, you're fearful, you feel like other people are more than you. I want to let everybody know in this place and those who are watching us right now that you are lovable. So re just repeat after me and say, I'm lovable. I'm lovable. Say, you are valuable. And say, I am competent. Repeat the three very easily. I am lovable, I am valuable, and I am competent. If you can always hide that within you as a woman, you are unstoppable. Where you say, I will raise the bar. I may not have been raised up by a family that had it together. I may not even have gone to school the way I would have wanted to go. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter whether you're 40, 50, 90, you can still go to that school. So don't stop yourself and then blame society and blame other things. Rise up as a woman above insecurity, above everything that has tried to stop you and decide that I'm going to get where I'm going. And to answer the question on purpose, you, you said, uh, what, what, what do you term as successful? And how do you measure success? Let me tell you, you measure success by fulfilling purpose. If you're not fulfilling purpose, you can never enjoy success in life. And when you're fulfilling purpose, success will follow you by fire, by force. It has no choice. It has to locate you. Why? Because, look, you're writing your books. You're singing your songs. You're doing your finances. You're, whatever it is that you're doing, if you're on course, it doesn't matter who's beside you and what they are doing. You run your race. Everybody is running their race. You run their, your race, run it perfectly, and you will be one successful woman without limits. All right. Well said indeed, although I feel that some people may think that's easier said than done, and I'll come to that in a moment. But Jennifer, you'd like to interject. Uh, thank you, uh, Reverend Kathy. That was great. I want to say, if you've read my book, Marriage Built to Last, I'm very categorical that to consider yourself successful, you've got to be successful, successful fast at home. Successful fast at home. And why I say success at home is that it doesn't matter the kind of family you have, single parent family, uh, you know, blended family, uh, the traditional family. Wherever you call home, that is the first success you will ever have. Pastor Kathy can tell you that you cannot serve in the church if you, your family is uh, disintegrated. You cannot serve, all right? You need to go resolve and then come and serve. Now, I will tell you this. 
success is not about you becoming the chairman of Kepsa. Success is not about you uh, being the CEO of Madison. Success is not about the titles. The titles are just part of a life journey. I've had a title. My last title was the chairman of Kenya Reinsurance Corporation. And doors would open, heads would turn, and now it's finished. Where did I return? Home. I returned home. Now, if I had lorded over everybody in my house, and I'm never coming home because I'm the chairman, I will not be received with love, with honor. So whatever it is that you do, just know your job will come to an end, your titles will come to an end, you will walk back with your tail between your legs to an environment that you neglected. You're from New York to Japan, I don't know where. I've got this international job. You don't even have time for your children. I will tell you, the time will come when you need to go back home and you ain't gonna have a home to go back to. My measure of success is I've raised some very strong honorable citizens and in turn they have become intentional parents and they are raising some great grandchildren that will be known that there was a generation of a woman that made a difference in her home i say to you success is in the mind what does success mean to you if i earn a million i will be successful beloved success is not about silver or gold. Success is about integrity, reputation, impact, and influence. If you are such a person, you are so successful in your generation because you made a difference to somebody's life. Success is not about just getting everything and becoming, you know, the most significant person where driving the best car, living in the best neighborhood, it is nothing of that. Success is about the difference you are able to make in the lives of others. Thank you. Flora, I'll bring you in at this point because while the Reverend and uh, Jenny are speaking about success initially coming from within in terms of first having goals and passions and visions, sometimes it's easier said than done. And you can't do it on your own, and I'll touch on that more in a moment. But I want to know, what has KEPSA done? Or how has KEPSA rallied the private sector to empower women and to ensure women's participation in the sector and also beyond? What are organizations like KEPSA doing? Thank you for the question. Um, KEPSA already, well, we have a sector board um, that actually mirrors the government, which is the youth and women. And um, in there, we have, uh, we've, we've actually got a gender, diver um, well, gender diversity is one thing. We, we have a supplier diversity program where we annually sit together with government and private sector and look at what are the obstacles that uh, women face, you know, be they AGPO, be they um, access to, to opportunities, both in private and public, and get people to commit to actually either give women more access or, you know, to remove the obstacles. Um, I think we, well, sorry, we also launched last year, and we're very proud, we launched a gender policy. So at policy level, we have these eight, eight um, very simple principles where we're just um, explaining the importance and the necessity to bring women to the table. For example, one of, the, one of them is you know, the, the, the statistics that, sh sh that show that women that have a, a, a more equal board actually perform you know, better. And um, another one would, would be about um, if, you don't have, if you can't measure it, then it doesn't actually get done. So perhaps we tell people get your, your HR um, need to be given from the CEO, sorry, the CEO has to of course believe that gender diversity is important, um, give it down to the people that are below that and actually start tracking it. And that is how we are going to change the divide. So um, we, we also, um, we're also around, um, we follow the government. I mean, we work with government quite closely and you, you noticed last year, actually it was this year, um, the president actually got a gender award, a global gender award, and that was by virtue of the work KEPSA has done. We mentor women. Uh, we have an AJIRA program uh, 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 where we actually um, mentor women 
um, on IT, and then after that we give them, we, we allow them to get opportunities. They can go and um, do um, work at the judiciary. We've done work at the county councils. So it's really a lot of a, a lot of sitting down and, and, and women bringing out their issues and, and for us to look, sort of create the opportunity. And I call them the great A's. You know, we give access to knowledge. If it is knowledge, we have a mentorship program. We give access to finance. We work with MasterCard Foundation and others, including private sector, NSC, have put in money where we actually give um, interest-free loans to women, especially around COVID. We give um, access to knowledge, um, you know, um, access to markets. We'll sit down with our companies and say, what can you give women? We need you to cordon off 40-50% um, of your work to women. We'll sit down and analyze the AGPO. There's the AGPO program, but does it work? And there's, of course, been a lot of inf you know, women saying, no, it doesn't work. Um, some, uh, we find husbands setting up companies in the wife's name so that they can get the work. Um, you, can, you, you find the people who are actually opening the tenders for AGPO are male and don't understand that women don't only need to, to deliver papers and uh, flowers. Women can do the tech, women can do the business, women can do the engineering. So there are a lot of barriers that we do sit. So for me, it's, um, we sit with, with government and with private sector to, rem to deal with those A's, access to knowledge, access to finance, access to markets, access to anything to allow the woman to come on the table. Okay, thank you. Rebecca, let me just go to the point of access to financial support and financial services. I want to come back to that because, let's face it, financial security is liberating for anyone, really, whether you're a man or a woman. So from where you sit, what advice do you have for women when it comes to managing their finances? Or where can they get advice on this and on investing whatever savings, for example, they might have? Um, so thank you very much for that question. Uh, for women to access finance, I think um, if you don't have uh, enough money, if you're running a business and you need some financial help, the commercial banks are there. I know many of us are running uh, to microfinances and they are there also. They serve a population. Yeah. But if you're looking for easy access, maybe cheap access, just talk to your bank. Um, if you have a charmer, many women, actually, most of us here, if I can just even ask, how many women belong to a charmer? Put your hands up. <laughs> yeah? There, there are many charmers that uh, give credit to their members. There are many um, friends and relatives, yeah? That's the, you know, because we are talking of all levels of, of women. So at the level, maybe a low level, you can run to your friend, your charmer. At a higher level, if you have a little bit more, you can go to your microfinance, your circle. Circles are there. In fact, circles control a lot of money. We are talking of almost uh, 400 billion. So you can run to your circle. I think circles do a situation where they say if you put in uh, like 10,000, they can give you up to 30,000. And you can run the numbers with that. Yes, we have a DOZ circle, so I can confirm that. Yes. Um, then as you move up the scale, you are an entrepreneur like Flo here. You can uh, go to your bank and borrow or use your savings, and that's where I come in. As fund managers, uh, we are about 18 of us in this market. Many people do not know we exist, but we exist. I think it's a case of uh, we have very marginal fees, so we are not able to market, but whenever we get a chance, especially now with social media, most of us are on all platforms. And the easiest product is money market. Yeah, it's called a money market fund. I don't know how many people have heard about money market funds, but they are very simple. What happens is that maybe you'll be told to save 5,000 or 1,000, and they have an yearly interest of about between 7 to about 10% per annum. And uh, you're allowed to save as much as you want. There's no restriction. 
There's also no one telling you that you must save every month. It's up, up and when you have the money, you can save. So money market funds offer a safe haven for many investors. Women, we are, we are not very uh, risky. We don't want risky investment. So money market fund oper operates like your bank account, only that now it's that bank account that's giving you an interest at the end of the month. The good thing, that interest is credited at the end of the month. This is information that many people don't know, but 17, if you look at the daily papers, the newspapers, even today, you'll, you'll see in the financial pages, money market fund. Mm -hmm. And you can talk to us, Madison, there are 17 of us, other fund managers, you can save. Also, the bank accounts, you can save with your bank. There are many banks that uh, offer savings accounts and current accounts. All right. Yeah, so these and, and hopefully with that, we'll all get to that point where we have financial. so much money that we can say, here you go, to our spouse or our better half or our partner, because that too is liberating. Go ahead. Actually, when she's talking about that, um, I have a brand of tea, Melvin's Tea, and I, when I was starting it 25 years ago, I can see exactly the journey she's talking about. You know, I, have, I, I never got employed. I was employed for nine months. I quit. And, um, you know, when I went to start looking for money, obviously women don't have collateral. I was not only a woman as a young girl. So I did the, the uh, borrow from friends you know, borrow from family. Then I went to the circle. Then I went to the, then I was big enough now to go to the bank. Um, but then there gets to a point where you need to put a lot of collateral. And right now the bank is saying, no, give me your house as a collateral. And as women, you know that's the last thing we're going to do because you're not going to put everything in a basket. So one of the things we've also been doing and we've successfully, I, I'm not even saying us, but just, just generally the private sector, is there are a lot of loans now that are available that really don't ask for 100% um, you know, collateral. I know it's happening in some of the banks where you have development partners putting up up to 75%. So you can go to your bank and say, can I borrow? I will put up 25% of the security and then I can borrow up to 75. There's, deben there's debenture financing now where I can say, this is my business, take all my assets and I want to borrow against my assets. So again, you don't have to have the big titles and everything. And these are really ways where we are, as women and as private sector, we're trying to, to rope in um, the business to understand. Women's repayment is what, 95, 96%? Women repay their loans. So why can't I actually borrow 95 to 96% of my money without security? You know, so those are the kind of areas that, um, you know, stock loans, um, uh, the where you actually borrow against your, your loans. Um, there's also invoice discounting. So there are a lot of ways that have been available now. And, you know, because the future is women, you're tending to find each and every bank has a really serious women agenda and they're there to listen. So all I would ask the women is go to your banks, insist and do not always accept to give all the deposit, all, all the collateral that they require. It is there, it is available. Right, thank you. All right, Jennifer. Maybe ahead. just to add on to the contribution. Sure. Um, if you know me well enough, you know that we've done a lot of love and money uh, with Rena Hicks, my daughter. And one of the things that I know for sure is that women are highly bankable. You don't need no collateral. You will be given the money because um, you know, of the rate at which women do not default from paying. However, my greatest concern is what you borrow the money for. I've interacted with a lot of women who borrow money because the husband has a business plan which he has no idea about what it is about, but he needs 10 million, he needs 5 million, he needs 15 million for a business plan that is not clearly articulated. She has borrowed from her chama, she has borrowed from her bank, she has borrowed from her employer, she's borrowed from her friends. And the business never has become. She's not a business partner. How do you borrow that kind of money and you're not a director of the company that is being given the money? You borrow it. I've met enough women that give the husband the money directly into the account to pay for the mortgage. As if you don't know where HFCK is and how you can wire that money. So you give the money, you wire the money each time to his account, but at the end of the day, it never gets to the mortgage account. 
Five years later, the house is being mortgage auctioned three years later. Now, for me, women are smart, they are bankable. But the challenge is they are not risk averse when it comes to love and relationships. I love him so much, I will give him anything. Over to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you know what happens after that? You know what happens after that? They come to me for prayer and crying. <laughs> and divine. <laughs> they come to you for divine intervention. So, so I'm the one now who wipes all those tears. And has to fix and the problem. Beat, and I beat the husbands. What's wrong with you? You know? Because because it's true. They give the money to the man. And the man has, has started seven businesses that have failed. And the woman still doesn't get it. Like, how are you going to get goosebumps even at this time? The, by the second time, the goosebumps should be done. Like, you know, he shouldn't now be giving you goosebumps. You're running to get money for him, and you know it never works. So I think women ought to be wise also. So you don't just borrow for him in the name of love. And then you're suffering and struggling, and then coming to me in the midnight hour, 4 a.m., I'm praying for you. I'm just saying. But where, where, where should all this begin? You know, we here in the audience may be in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond, mm. but at what point should women start getting more switched on about issues that affect them? I think for me what, what I would say is for a woman to first and foremost, I think the greatest gift a woman can do to herself is know herself. Know yourself. Know who you are as a woman. Know what you can and cannot do. And then don't try to do something because other people are doing. Don't go to China because that's where we are going now. Don't go to Turkey because now we are Turkish. Like decide who you are and what suits you and do what suits you. Because that's again the copying and the trying to be like the wannabe is what is really bringing a lot of tears to women. But where should this start? Are, are the parents responsible or the guardians responsible um, for instilling such values and thought systems into a young adolescent? You know, or is it schools that need to start doing this as well? You know, where, where really should it begin? Because let's face it, along the way, it's very easy to get derailed. Go ahead. It starts at the beginning. Which is where? When you're born. Okay. This is, this is who you are. This is what you're expected to do. Stand up for yourself. Give your child an environment to choose. I was brought up by a very liberated... So therefore it's the parents, in it, your view. It, it starts is with parenting. Parents. Mm. Parenting. Yeah. parenting. And then remember, we are Africans. We also co-parent. Yeah. I don't believe in abrogating that responsibility to a school at all. I believe we need to do it as parents. And that's what another, another area I, I tend to find with women, especially who, who have careers. I run to the career, and I think, um, I think Jennifer is the one who spoke about it. I'm so busy. And then after that, I go to go to the gym. And then I've got to meet my chairman. And therefore, I've got no time for my child. You're doing your child disservice. You really need it. It begins at home. It begins with the woman. And echoed, of course, by the men or developed by both. But it begins at the beginning. Okay. I don't think anybody, you should cut anybody any flag for not letting that happen. Somebody did it. Her grandmother did it for her. Mm -hmm. My mother did it for me. So we need to let to, to continue it. Otherwise, w broken societies get broken because people abrogate their responsibilities. Right. Valid point, and I'll come back to that. Go ahead, Rebecca. You wanted to contribute? I actually agree. Um, it starts from that beginning, the parenting. And you'll notice we've done a lot of studies. I think studies have also been done by many people that those, the, the parents who are involved with their children, especially like at this age, in your late 30s or, or late 20s and 40s, how you are today uh, with your finances is how you saw your parents with their finances. Children learn from seeing. You cannot, you cannot tell the child and act different. So as parents, as career women, as me, I look at myself and I'm like that child. She has to learn from me what I, I, I do with my money, what I tell her, how I behave around money, then she will know and she'll become a good citizen. Okay. Yes. 
Go ahead. C can I say something sure. also? That yes, it's very, very important how we bring our children up. But you know what? Life is such that sometimes you don't get those privileges. Sometimes you, 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 you don't choose where you come from. Like for instance, my husband came from a very, very broken, dysfunctional family completely dysfunctional, fighting every day. You know, the father used to beat the mother. He was like a boxer, like not for real, but he was really, yeah. He, he was really fighting her and all that. Long story short, when he grew up and became a teenager with, uh, you know, like he could think for himself, he decided, you know what, this is not a good route. This is not a good uh, place for me to go. So I'm going to do everything that I can do to change my direction. I'm just saying that if you didn't get a chance to grow up in that amazing family, you have a choice to make and decide. I'm not going to end up like my mother. I'm not ending up like my father or grandfather or whoever it is that was involved with me. Because at the end of the day, you don't have control over what anybody does, including your parents but you have control over your response. So let's not react to life. Let's respond to life. Response gives you a moment to think about what you're going to answer and how you're going to take it. So take a moment and stop reacting and respond. <laughs> right. Great. As you're responding, as you respond to life, um, allow me to let you know that you need a mentor in your life. And, and if you don't have a mentor in certain aspects of your life, you are losing out big time. And so, yes, you may have had parents that raised you. You may not have. But now each one of us that is here is an adult. It's up to you to decide, I need a mentor in this particular area of my life. Get one and your life will never be the same again. I, 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 I am very privileged to have had some serious mentors in my life. Otherwise, I would not be sitting here in front of you. It has to be intentional. It's something you have to purpose and step out and do that. Okay, thank you. I want to come to the point of how there's, there's a lot that women have to manage and deal with. There's the home, which you said that's where it starts from. There's building their career, and there's following their passions, and there's taking care of them, their well-being, their health, their mental state. Is there such a thing as balance. <laughs> can, can we do it all? How do we do it all? There's, in some instances, managing the children as well. Um, and, and I feel that is something that a lot of women uh, struggle with, finding that balance and finding that me time to be able to function at their best. Uh, Jennifer. Well, even as you speak about all that, I'm reminded of myself as a younger woman. Today I do what I want, when I want, how I want. I mean, I am living life large. Don't we all want to be like Jennifer? <laughs> Tomorrow I'm traveling. My husband and I are going on a cruise. Hello. <laughs> and now, when I look at you, I know you are 20 to 29 years. Are you here, 20 to 29? Let me see by a show of hands. Let me see you. Oh, you're so pretty. You're so good. But I want to let you know that you are in your trying out season in life. You're trying out a job. You are trying out a bit of this and a bit of that. And that's the season that you are in. And sometimes you burn your fingers. You need a mentor to help you. You're in your 30 to 39. Are you here? 30 to 39. Oh, my goodness. Let me see those hands. You are so many. Now, you are in your turbulent 30s. You don't know whether you are coming, going, or gone. Oh, yeah. You are struggling with your careers. You are struggling with love. You are struggling with children. You are struggling with friendships. You are struggling with neighbors. You are struggling. And I want you to know you need me in your life. You need me in your life. Been there, done that. Now, the only way you will manage it is when you interact with somebody like me to let you know 
It's okay. It's only a season. It's going to calm down. So this is a season you need to prioritize. You've got to recognize what's important. You've got to find partners to help you along the journey. You've got to be good to mama so that she can come and take care of your children. My grandchildren are always in my house. It's like a kindergarten. They are lucky. They've got a ma grandma who can take care. So is uh, uh, Reverend Kathy in that level. So what am I saying? Recognize your season. Are you 40 to 49 and you're here? 40 to 49. Oh my goodness. I see you there. You are great. Monica, now you are in the season of fabulous and fortified. Oh my goodness. And let me tell you, because you navigated, I, as you speak here, I can see you navigated your 20s, you navigated your 30s, now you are in your 40s, you're fortified. And that's a good place. But if you're not fortified and fabulous in your 40s, you need accelerated coaching, counseling, mentoring, name it. You need that. All right? And so when you are in that season of high productivity, you will be saying every day, not tonight, darling, not tonight. <laughs> Why? Because you are so tired of all your roles. Learn to delegate. Learn to have helpers. Learn to prioritize, and you will be fine. When you see us here, it doesn't mean we were not in that turbulence. We just managed it somehow by the grace of God, but here we are. That's why you must find an older woman to be your mentor. Uh-huh. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm a little blown away, but, but I am also really appreciating that you're saying for a lot of us, whatever it is everyone's going through, it is a season. It is it a is. season. Yeah, it is. It is. A and it is what it is. And a lot of people leave something like a marriage because of a season. Yet there is no marriage without a season, y'all. Mm. Every marriage has a summer, it has winter, it has spring, and it has uh, uh, fall, autumn. autumn. Mm. So every marriage has a season. Every business has a season. So everything in life will have a season. The question is what you do with that season. See, when you go to America right now and they have winter, it's so cold, they don't relocate. They just change their attire. So you know what? <laughs> you just need to change your apparel and, force, and forcefully look at that weather and tell it, you know what? Me and you, one is living and it's not going to be me. That's winter. It's going to live your life very soon. So don't pack up because of a season. Amen? Somebody say hallelujah. That's what's up. And I like what, what Jenny said. I think this is so critical for all of us. Get a mentor. Please have somebody who you can talk to. A lot of people right now, we are in that season of depression, mental health issues. My goodness, we, I don't think we have ever canceled like we have in this season. We are forever in canceling, canceling somebody because of mental health issues. If you can just talk, and you know women heal while talking, you know, we, yeah, while you talk, you heal. So find somebody, sit on a stone. Talk to that person until you're done. You'll be surprised. By the end of your talk, you'll be so much better. So please get a mentor and talk to them. Thank you. Laura, I'll come to you. Yep. So I was going to say... Um, exactly what they are saying in the in the especially in the corporate world um, work life balance yeah. sometimes there's no balance so you have to be very 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 intentional mm. you've come from new york you had no choice mm. you had to do 10 days you missed one two three when you come back negotiate and just say i, I was working 10 days give me four days so you've got to be very very intentional of who is losing out and it's usually mm. the home the second area I find women sort of taking shortcuts is I, you, you, you see you're flying to New York and you're dressing how you dress. You want to pay your maid 8,000 shillings, way below the, even the government minimum wage. What is that? These are your su support systems. Make your house work. You should be able to have a home where you can call and say dinner for 10, are they international, are they local, and it
for, for me, it's a little about look at what your values are, invest in that. Invest in whether it is time, whether it is money, whether it is training, whether it is resources, because that will give you the foundation to be able so you're talking about support systems as a woman helping you get yeah. through. Mm. So not only should you be focusing on how to um, empower yourself, but you should empower those around you, even at the house level, at the home level, because that is ultimately what's going to, to help you. Mm. Yes, you've got peers, yeah. Sorry, you yes. just need to check on that microphone. And, and maybe just to add a voice to that and... Um, these career women are really struggling every day with work-life balance. After a lot of research and studies, it became quite clear that work-life balance is a fallacy. It will never happen. Something has to go. And so we call it work-life integration. So it doesn't mean that when you're not at work, you ignore work. You are home, but you are still working, all right? You are working, but you don't forget to make that phone call to know that people at home are okay. You travel, you do FaceTime, you are talking to your family. So it's all about integrating work, life, and love. When you learn that, then you rest. Because as a young mother, you've got a young child. How do you balance that? As a young woman, you've got so many rules. How do you balance? Something has to go. So at the end of the day, we as women struggle with being, wanting to be super human, super woman. I mean, just put that down and say, I wear this hat now, I wear that hat tomorrow, and continue having your PAs everywhere who are going to support you uh, to do life so that you can live purposefully and thrive fully. Thank you. Before I continue, I just want to alert the audience that we will go into a short Q&A session. So my colleague Zainab will come around. In case you might have a question for any of the panelists, please just uh, get Zainab's attention and then we'll come to you for that. Rebecca, to you at this point, I feel, and I'm not sure if the panel agrees, that there's a big audience missing from this conversation today, and that is the men. It's all very well that we are empowering each other here, but like it was said earlier, we can't do this alone as much as we may want to. And also, Reverend, you alluded to it as well. You said we need the men. For a number of things, we need the men, but when it comes to empowering women and supporting women and gender equality, we need the men. What are your views on the importance that men play in women empowerment? Yes, thank you for the question. It's actually very true. We need men as allies, yeah? And I don't just say maybe, I can just talk about all the facets of our lives. So in the office, career women, we need the men as our allies. These men could be your, like in my case, I'm an MD, my middle level managers. I can't be able to work well without them. I need to bring the gender balance because again, having too many ladies in a team that is also not problematic. <laughs> healthy. So we need to empower the men. Actually, I was talking to some women earlier, and what's coming out is that in the 90s, in the 80s, I think the Beijing conference and after that what happened, the ladies have been quite empowered. This is why we are so many of us here in this generation, having great careers, being in positions of leadership, be it in church and all that. But I think somewhere along the way, something happened. This joke that we keep talking about, it becomes sometimes a serious conversation, sometimes it becomes a joke, the boy child, yeah? And I think it's a, it's a tragedy that we are not seeing that there is a problem there, especially the men between, I think, uh, that age of 1978 going all the way down 
they are the ones in the workforce today. They are the ones leading in families. The reason why women are probably the ones providing, even where you have a man, is because there is not enough empowering of those men, even at the home situation, for instance. So you have a man, as Pastor Kathy has said, um, the man would come from a destitute situation, but with her being there, she was able to lead the man into his success. So there's a, there's a role that women can play in that, in the home situation. And even Jenny has alluded to that. Um, then we have the workplace. We need to empower the men around us, not tr uh, trouble on them. I think they are very important. I believe in the men. In fact, we do interviews and sometimes we, I, I live very sad because we are looking for a man and we can't get a man. Maybe an interview where 10, women, uh, 10 people uh, apply for the job, there are eight women who show up. And you're left with two men. And the two men who come probably are not that confident. So from home, from the office, from being an auntie, we have to empower the men. Our brothers, even back at home, just empower them. Give them the tools because that's what they lack and they're important. Thank you. Yeah, can, um, for me, this is, it's, it's, a, it's a topic that really touches my heart because I deal with them directly. And um, yes, it's true the woman has been ostracized, ridiculed, push, pushed aside, and all manner of things has been done to the woman. Now we've picked up the woman, and that's why we are all here, like we say, but at the expense of the man. And a lot of men have really been shunned and pushed aside. And so many have gotten into, into things that are, you can't even begin to explain, into alcoholism and drug addiction and all that. You will find that in, in uh, many places that I won't mention, that uh, they are not even having children anymore because the men have completely lost it. They are out there, you know, just uh, doing all manner of, 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 of stuff. We need to really get a hold of our men and raise them up. The boy child is in trouble. Hear me, those of you who are here and those who are watching us today. The boy child is in trouble. And we need to really go out there, especially for the woman that has been empowered, go out there and get that boy child and raise them up. Because they are our sons. Listen, we are either raising a wonderful husband for somebody or we are raising a prayer person project for somebody out there we, isn't it we are raising a project or we are raising a wonderful person so we need to understand it's all going to come back to us as women you don't want your daughter being battered by a drunkard you don't want your daughter being you know abused by a, a drug abuser you want your daughter in a solid place with a solid man and so please let's really go out there and get the men because we need them we desperately need them. There can be no continuity in life without the men. Essentially, we need each other. The men need the women, and the women need the men. And perhaps that's how it was meant to be. All right, at this point, let me hand over to my colleague, Zainab Bismal to open the floor to the audience and get a few questions. Please do make your questions brief and to the point as we are slowly running out of time, or quickly running out of time. Zainab, over to you. All right, thanks, Sweetie, indeed. And I'll just quickly begin uh, with uh, a fast, it's, in fact, it's a comment, uh, and I'll allow her to just introduce herself and make that comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Zainab. My name is Catherine Musakali. I'm the chair of the Women on Boards Net Network. Just two short comments, or three. Um, I have been interacting with the women, and I've collected a number of issues that we go through. And I just want to highlight one issue, that as women, we are sweating small stuff and forgetting the big stuff, developing ourselves, understanding ourselves, and growing ourselves. Instead, why do we have to be the ones to shop every Saturday when you have that manager to help you at home? Empower her. 
Let her go to the market. Use the time to, you know, me time to develop yourself, to grow yourself, to network in the right places, okay? That's one point. The second one is that for some of us who have supportive spouses, and I agree that not all of us have supp sup supportive spouses. Sometimes we are too mother hen. What does a hen do? It gathers everybody underneath her. And so there's no space for the men to come in and help. You know, they could want to go to school, but because we are there, we don't allow them to go to school for the children. We are the ones to go. In the meantime, we are suffering ourselves. We don't develop ourselves. Lastly, emotional intelligence. Knowing yourself, understanding yourself, social awareness, and developing those relationships that will help you get to where you want to go. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful advice there. Let me get uh, the next uh, person just to give us a, 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 they have a quick question as well. Okay, thank you. My name is Susan Keitani and I'm the owner of Posh Palace. So I love to make women beautiful. The reason I started Posh Palace is because we, women need a beautiful space to come and have self-care. We work so hard, we give, we keep giving, we raise kids, we take care of husbands, we always talking about the way my hubby is my fifth born, my hubby is my second born, and we're so proud of it, you know, because we're naturalists. But do you fill your cup? Who fills your cup? You know, ask your neighbor who fills your cup. Yeah, so we gotta ask that question. Who fills your cup? You have to take care of yourself, ladies. You have to, you know, take time to feel beautiful. Take time to make your nails, love on yourself. If you're waiting for a man to love you, it starts with you, you know. If you don't love yourself, then for sure, there's going to be no other love you'll get that's going to be greater than self-love. So I'm all for self-love. I'd like to also talk about, um, I'm a single parent, or rather I'm divorced. I think we, everybody on the panel is married. And 50% uh, of women are raising children alone or in single parent families. And that's the new reality in Kenya. We cannot run away from that. Is there anyone who's raising their baby alone and you have to be a boss and you have to work? Yes. So we also have to talk about that. So I'd like for you to tackle that because that's a reality. Whether we go to church, whether we want to pretend that it's all rosy and beautiful, life is real, shit happens things happen <laughs> and so we, we should talk about that the second thing I also want us to talk about yeah thank you for the hand clap <laughs> I also want us to talk about because uh, we're here to be real you know we also need to talk about the imposter syndrome that women experience because the reason we hand over the money to men is because we feel like we're not enough, you know? So women suffer from imposter syndrome. I'm a woman in business. It's taken me so many years. I'm turning 40 next year. I was 30, a few weeks ago, I was 39. So I went through my crisis period, you know? And I'm happy to finally be crossing to 40s. And uh, to date, uh, I, I, I listen to so many women and we're in that... Before you get to your 40s, there's that season where you're not sure. You're making money, but you still feel like it's not me, you know? So at what point does a woman, you know, uh, get there? So I think you could address that for us today. But thank you, ladies. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan. Sriti, just one more last question from uh, an, another member of our audience. Zainab, you can take two more. Thank you very much. My name is Veronica Dumbi and I'm a senior manager in the finance field. I happen to work for an organization and also lead in a volunteer organization that values diversity. And that is how I got to where I am because I have head managers who value diversity and have been given a place to sit at the table in both organizations. However, I do mentor ladies who are either divorced or they're single by choice right, some of them, some, uh, their husbands died, and they feel like they get discriminated, that they are not given a chance to lead simply because they are single, right? So we do accept that all organizations do not give that diversity, um, you know, uh, observance. So our panel, could you comment about that? And since you are the leadership of many organizations, 
tell us is that really what happens that uh, single women are discriminated so that I can have a good answer for my mentees. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see another beautiful lady who's just stood up. Uh, allow her to just give a space as well. So very quickly as well. Question, comment? Question. When we are talking the, few, the present being female, are we asking which female is on the table? I am a widow and a widow rights defender working in Sierra County. Where I'm seated on that table, is a Lima from Wajia County, and two widows elected as MCAs in Sierra County. <laughs> with me is Grace from Isiolo Gender Watch, working with women in Isiolo. If you look at the panelist, where is the representation of rural women? <laughs> Let's unpack future being present? Are widows included? Are young women included? Are single mothers included? Or are we also safeguarding the space because we are urban? Two, when we are talking the future, the present is a female. We are talking to corporate and media, thank you. You've always given us space as rural women. Where is CSR or your ventures where we work along the lecture where HIV has highly impacted and left most widows? At what point do we also become marketers and partners in progress of your products and services? Religion, when we are talking about the future being female. At what point does religion also interrupt culture? Is it a conversation we are afraid to have? Let's unpack the future being female. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Wonderfully said, and I must say that is quite a challenge for all of us here. Smriti, can you count me one more person? Very briefly, Zainab. All right, very briefly. So we did indeed have uh, another lady, a member of the audience here, who wanted to ask a question. Thank you so much. My name is Audrey Jaffet. I work with Hasi Busako, the Sako for Professionals. I have one question. It's about a future woman. I understand if not you or your friend or your relative, we have so many women who are so busy they get home either even some of them at 11 p.m. in the morning. They're so busy. Now my question is, the future child. What can we do to ensure the future child is taken care of? Do we have people to mentor them? I just want them to go through that so that we can be able to know, as we talk about the present, how are we preparing the future woman? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Smriti, over to you. Thank you, Zainab, and to all those who asked a question. If you didn't get a chance, perhaps after this session, you can approach some of our panelists. All right, so a few issues raised there. The importance of self-care, taking care of yourself mentally, emotionally, and physically as a woman. Uh, the question about diversity and also a question about single mothers and their situation and how they make it in life. Are they discriminated against? Uh, the question of widows and also uh, how religion affects culture and the future of the child. All right, that's a lot to get through and we are unfortunately running out of time. So let me just pick a few of those points and Rebecca, I'll start with you. There was a question about uh, the single mother, the single woman, those women who may have gone through a turbulent divorce or a turbulent relationship. Perhaps they are struggling or perhaps they have found a sense of freedom having come out of a disruptive relationship but it's just them and their child they're trying to make it in life they're trying to go to work they're trying their hardest but they're also sort of doing it on their own they may have some sort of support grandparents or a house manager but ultimately they may feel it is just them because that spousal support does make a big difference tell us from your perspective what your views are on that thank you smithy um, I'll tell it, that, that question is 
very, um, it hits home for me because I'm a single mother. Um, a, lo a while back, I would not be comfortable saying that because, yes, society, I don't, I wouldn't say discriminate. I think there's a stigma. I don't know whether stigma and discrimination are one and the same, but there's a stigma when us ladies are talked about and when you introduce yourself as a single person, uh, a single mother especially, there's a stigma around that, like, oh, what could have happened? Oh my God, like there are issues around that. And what today's woman is going through, especially in the ages of maybe that 21, even older ones, even 65 or whatever, but I think it's very prevalent in the ages of, the middle ages, is that more or less you're finding that very many women are falling to that singlehood. And I wouldn't say, um, I know there are some, there's a small population of women that choose to be single, but majority of us, would like to be married, set out in a marriage situation or there was a promise of marriage, like in my case, and maybe somewhere along when you got pregnant, something happened and you found yourself single. That's definitely my story. So I think the most important thing, what I learned, because I'll say from my, from my perspective, you have, to ha you have to go through the grieving process. For me, it was when I was pregnant. It was very painful, but the grieving process must start. You can't ignore it. And all of us grieve in different ways. And sometimes you'll see a woman behaving. I've seen some single women who I mentor who go into the drugs and alcohol. I think you need to come back home to yourself. That is just uh, distractions. You need to say, okay, fine, I'm a single lady. I didn't probably want to be in this situation, but I'm in this situation. So what do I do? And I have children, I have relatives to take care of. Then you, you go back to what my panelists have said here. Know thyself. Even... Uh, the marriage or the relationship does not define you, who you are. Even the married ones have their own relationship, have their own personality. So know yourself. Know what is, it is that is important for you. Especially for single ladies, you have to get your finances right. So the journey that's going to take you to financial security, take it. Go back to school. It, you're going to work harder than a married woman, but you have to do it. So go through your grieving. Don't grieve forever. Get up and get working. And you are an example. Of and I'm an example. So if you live here <laughs> with something, just know it's doable. I'm 41 years old. It's doable. I just want to encourage you. I was a single mother at the age of 21. So at 21, I, I, I got a baby and was a single mother for a few years before I was blessed with a husband. So he'll come. <laughs> Hello. I fire yeah. to that. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're almost out of time. Uh, Flora, I'll put the question to, to you about the importance of self-care and the imposter syndrome. Break that down to those who may not know exactly what that is. All right. Um, self-care, I think, um, I must say, I've noticed women do it a lot. You know, I mean, people are appreciating the importance. It's and, and I use an analogy where I cannot support you. I myself am not solid. So I need to feel good about myself. I need to be psychologically prepared to what is going to come. Remember we said a woman will handle, everything will be thrown at us. So you need to be psychologically strong. You need to feel confident. But I think another bit I'd like to add is sometimes when we're preparing ourselves as women or when we're spoiling ourselves, remember your environment. I have seen women walk into, in, into offices a little, I would say, ill-dressed beautiful for the club, excellent for the club, but maybe not for the office. So it's a little bit about just, just knowing your environment and enjoying that space and not feeling guilty. If there's anything women carry is guilt. You don't feel, don't feel guilty using the kitchen budget to do your nails, <laughs> do it. 
I think the other one is around the imposter syndrome. You know, um, there's a position coming up and you want to apply. I'm not good enough. And your friends tell you, hey, this is you, Flo. This is you. Why aren't you applying? We've all, we've all been there. We need to trust ourselves. Uh, there's something a friend of mine remember calling it. She was calling it the triple threat, which is validation. We are always looking for other people to validate us. Learn to validate yourself. You are enough. I think we've heard it today from the pastor. We've heard it from, you know, you are okay. I th uh, um, the other thing about the triple threat is around um, praise and approval. You don't need praise for others for you to, be to, 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 uh, to, to, to believe in yourself. And the other one is approval. Why do I need appro your approval, my husband's approval, to put an application for a job that I want? Maybe unless the job has something to do with travel and we've decided as a couple we don't want to be separated, that can become a conversation. But approval, um, um, awareness, appraising yourself, ladies, we need to learn to do it for ourselves, to believe in ourselves. And then that way you don't have to have the imposter syndrome. There's a final one. When you get the job, she's a, she's a managing, she's the CEO of, 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 of this company, you, you, you can't believe it's, 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 it's me. You know, it, it, how did I get here? And, and, and you start sort of messing it up. And you've heard people who self-sabotage because they can't believe it. Or you stop setting yourself to the next milestone. What do men do? Men get here, they give them the ladder, they've gone. They already, in fact, they can jump some ranks very happily. But for us women, we want to cross the T's and drop the I and say, we don't have this and I can't move to this grade. Why not? Why can't I go from grade A, from G to A, Z or Z to A? You know, so I th also feel we just need to trust ourselves, know that it, it is doable and ignore the imposter syndrome. Incidentally, if you guys read biographies, presidents feel it. Um, you know, people, generals in the war feel the imposter syndrome. It is natural. It actually proves you're human. Thank you so much. There are more questions to get through, but perhaps we will do that for a few minutes off air because we've got to close. So at this point, I would like to come to you all for your final remarks. And uh, Jenny, I'll begin with you. On this day where we have concluded that the present is female, what are your parting words to the viewers and audience? I think my, my parting words to each one of you is it doesn't matter the demographic you come from, single, married, widowed, searching, whatever you are, it's not about the title, it's about you as an individual. There's a place for you. I will say when it comes to stereotyping, it, it's not the external that really brings you down. It is the internal and your own insecurities that begin uh, there. And so uh, what happens is that the, be the, the behavior that is uh, presented then becomes a challenge. I would say, uh, Shmiti, that government policies really need to be very stringent on, on how to deal with men that uh, make these girls pregnant and walk away. I met a gentleman who had 14 children out of wedlock and never married any of them. So at the end of the day, I think there needs to be some stringent uh, means of holding the men accountable. Yes, it is our season. For every woman, I would say to you, you are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for one man. Hold yourself to that height, knowing that you're good enough, you're beautiful enough, you're hardworking enough, and making the world recognize what it thinks of. What's the essence you leave behind as you leave our room? It's no longer about you, I can tell you that. And, and, and Grace, let me interject for a moment because this is in your mic but we will come back to you for that. Apologies for that. Rebecca, let me come to you um, briefly because we're running out of time Please, for your closing remarks. Sorry about that. Thank you, Smithy. Uh, my closing remark, as a lady, as a woman, the present is woman. Believe in yourself. So much has gone, so many women have gone before us to make it better for us. Believe in yourself. Their lady, your sister, your cousin, the society in general, the people you, you go to chat with, make it better for them. And then, a woman without money? No, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. 
So get your money right. Get your money. Secure the bag. As we say, get your money, secure the bag, start saving. Paying yourself is saving. You don't pay yourself by, yes, it's good to look nice, but that's consumption. Save money for the future, money for tomorrow. Save, save, save. Thank that's you so much. Thank short. you. Laura, your closing remark. Um, basically, I'd say, um, ladies, we've had a lot today. And really, it's just to say, step up. You are enough. Lift up. As you go forward, count. What is your circle of influence? Who have you influenced? Who have you picked up? I have a mentorship program that I do. I mentor women in manufacturing because I struggled as a manufacturer. Who and how many people can you lift up? So if you step up, lift up, let us hear that inner voice in you because you all have a voice. You all have something you bring to the table, believe it or not. Thank Seize you. the opportunity and let us blow this space. Thank you so much. Jennifer, I'll allow you just to finish extremely briefly before we close. I will just Jennifer. say, live purposefully, love passionately, and thrive unapologetically because you deserve it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Reverend, you have the last word. <laughs> Learn to celebrate yourself. I've actually written a book on that. Celebrate yourself. People don't see you as you are. People see you as they are. So don't allow people's view of you determine who you are and what you become. That's their view. Get your view. Thank you, ladies. Much appreciate your time. Thank you so much for those very valid and informative and encouraging remarks on this panel. Thank you very much. You have been watching The Female is Present, NMG's first uh, inaugural high tea event, discussing and connecting and sharing ideas on issues that affect women. We've got to close for now. So on behalf of my colleague, Zainab Bismal and myself, Smriti Vidyarthi, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to NTV. Bye-bye for now. This is NTV. Go Ahead is believing to make each day a brighter day. The confidence to create opportunity. It's those small acts that go a long way. Going ahead is us changing our communities to go ahead. Now, that is the Kenyan spirit. Since the pandemic, all mums know to be cautious of the many kinds of everyday germs that spread easily. Get peace of mind and protect the ones 